Hey everyone, welcome to Brick Vault. Today in front of us is an incredible Warhammer 40,000 themed build. This here in front of us is the Dreadnought. Because this video is entirely about this LEGO creation, I'm not going to be getting into the history of Warhammer 40k, but we've never talked about this kind of stuff on the channel so far, and I need to give you just a little bit of context as to what the Dreadnought actually is. Essentially, the human race exists in a time of constant war. They're fighting against against humans and aliens and supernatural monsters, and this has been going on for thousands and thousands of years. Dreadnoughts are amongst the biggest and baddest of any of the war machines that you can find on the battlefield, and not just because they've got heavy armor and weaponry, but they're actually cybernetic machines created from the somewhat still living body parts of fallen marines, of which uh, the consciousness has been uploaded and is somewhat maintained on the inside of the machine to be the eyes and ears and controls. So they're extremely experienced, incredibly ruthless on the battlefield, and because of the way they are preserved in the machinery, they actually can live forever, potentially speaking, as long as the inside of the hull doesn't get damaged. So within universe, some of these dreadnoughts are thousands of years old, and they are somewhat worshipped as demigods amongst their fellow soldiers. All right, that's it for a history lesson. There is so much more to get into in terms of the universe uh, that these guys dwell in, but long story short, they're just a little bit more than that of a cool looking mech, which they also are. <laughs> Anyways, if you guys are familiar with some of the other custom builds that go up in our web store, you might recognize this build style. This comes from Jarek. He also designed all of these other ships. And just like them, you can find the building instructions at our web store. That's www.brickvault.toys. Like always, with each purchase comes the PDF step-by-step -step building instructions, as well as a digital parts list file for quickly, easily uploading the pieces that you're going to need online to order and build and getting instructions from us is not just a great way to help support us here at the channel but also the incredibly talented designers that we work with like Jarek. Now let's jump back into the model because I think there's a lot of really important build details to pay attention to when taking a closer look at this thing. Initially I would describe this machine as old school cool just in the way it's been designed. It's got a very blocky almost basic body with really intentional subtle harsh angles and then the limbs have been built in that classic old robot styles with the teethed feet and cylinders, basic cylinders that make up both the legs and the arms. The basic four fingers from the power claw or power fist, however you like to call it, are very crude and I'm a big fan of the detailing on the back. There's some excellent detailing using those slope pieces that are spaced out, uh, not quite a stud apart, and often those exhaust pipes sticking off the back of the larger vehicles are completely riddled with holes and that effect is is in fact captured pretty well with those tire pieces. The tread pattern there just reminds me of what those exhaust pipes generally look like on the back of a dreadnought. On top of that, you have no doubt been noticing all types of clip pieces and small greebling pieces to indicate the more nitty gritty gears and pistons that lie just beneath the heavy armor. And once again, there are just a ton of pneumatic tubes that connect the essential fluids and oils that need to get to the limbs of this very large and heavy machine. Now, just like within the universe of Warhammer, these guys are highly modifiable. And namely, when I say that, it just means you can switch out the arms for all kinds of different weapons. I'm gonna be going through all the different attachments. The baseline core build for this robot comes with a power claw, on the left arm and an assault cannon, big old minigun, on the right. I sort of filmed this in the order that I thought made the most sense though, so let's start off with the power claws on both sides and work our way through the attachments. First things first, the power claws themselves can actually just have their own attachments. This one here, I believe, is just a storm bolter that has been modified to be compatible with a dreadnought. It's pretty easy to get it uh, fully attached to the bottom arm, the round 2x2 two two circular plate plate attaches to the bracket at the bottom and the other end of the ammo belt uh, clips into the back of the arm. It's a solid bit of detailing here, adds a bit more weaponry, gives you slightly more range, and personally I think those little gray pin pieces at the very ends uh, really ties the detailing of the bolter together uh, the best. Not of course including uh, the general build style that makes up the ammo belts, which you'll see more of later with the other attachments. Now for the other side, let's just attach the flamethrower 
or Heavy Flamer, I think is the official name. I'm not totally sure. I love the yellow highlight right at the end by the nozzle. You can also see how that flamethrower has the little starter flame in the front attached with that black hot dog piece. And of course, it wouldn't be an ammo belt that is being attached to the back of an arm, but instead a fuel line. So you don't have all those little dark bluish gray clips. This is my personal favorite look for the Dreadnought, which is having both of the power claws attached and the sub weapons attached to both of the undersides of the arms. I really, really like how incredibly poseable this model is. The torso has quite a lot of mobility and both of the arms can pretty much, actually, I think they can go uh, a full 160 degrees if you really want. And there's even a little bit of posability with that elbow joint. But moving on to the very next build, this is a really common one. We've got the assault cannon. Absolutely love the design choices here with those black binocular pieces to make the several barrels that would be spinning around. That yellow cylindrical barrel piece though that is at the very bottom makes up the actual point of the cannon where the where the bullets would be flying out. And though some of these side attachments I just don't think look quite as nice as the arms, I can't appreciate the industrial efficiency of what it would take to just have a housing for a cannon instead of having an arm holding onto one. It makes a lot more sense logistically, even though this entire world is totally fantastical and just in general a bit over the top. I think that tan detailing in the back probably makes up a bit of the ammo box and you can see both a line uh, for maybe some type of gas as well as the ammo belt line itself. Now moving on over to the next side, we've got one of the better ranged weapons out there. This is a very large missile launcher. I like the targeting system at the bottom. The offset design for the missiles on the inside, probably the missile housings themselves, is my favorite bit of detailing on this bit. But once again, you can also appreciate the binocular detailing sticking out the side as well. There are two different pneumatic tube line attachments on the underside of this missile launcher, perhaps for hydraulics or to make the machine function just work a little bit smoother when firing firing out uh, these large missiles. And once again, you can actually get some pretty dynamic poses, even though these attachments right here that you can see are relatively blocky. Now I have saved the most impressive attachment for the end here. These are the twin linked LAS cannons. And I gotta say the build here is incredibly difficult and advanced. Just a forewarning, the uh, black rubber that you see outlining the attachment points between the two cannons is actually a couple of stretched out tire pieces. In general, this is an incredibly advanced build and that part in particular takes a bit of extra dexterity, uh, but you'll be glad that you went through the effort to get there because I think the detailing for this cannon is absolutely excellent. There's also more tire pieces used to outline the ends of both of the LAS cannons and there are three different hose pieces <laughs> connected there in the back, two being the pneumatic tubes and one of them being the larger type of riveted tube. I can't quite remember the name of that piece uh, off the top of my head. With the largest of weapons attached here, I'd say the Dreadnought probably looks its most intimidating, but at the end of the day, that is really up for you guys to decide. You can always switch out any types of arms that you would like. There are separate XML files for the baseline build of this model and all of the attachments, depending on what kinds of arms you'd want to build, or if you just want to build them all together. And now let's switch him back to my favorite configuration and take Take a look at this amazing stand that Jarek has built. There is a basic black border built out of two by two inverted slopes, and then the meat of the stand, the decorated parts, are created by a bunch of side constructed brick built slope areas that all kind of neatly fit in together, though there are these open cracks that represent uh, pretty well the torn up ground that wherever this dreadnought seems to be fighting. There are a few trees or plants or bushes that are scattered around on the ground amidst some bones and a single loose skeleton that you just kind of throw in between the feet. And now it really does feel like the Dreadnought is at home. Looking at this whole thing together, this model has 
quite a presence. And I do just want to point out that there are the extra details added along the front that I didn't quite say right in the beginning. You can see some decoration. Perhaps this is an older Dreadnought that has seen quite a lot of battle. So I do appreciate that little added extra red ribbon piece there. Also, you'll notice that there is this fist insignia on the uh, shield piece. Remember, Nexo Knights has about a million different powers, so you can choose your own sigil, and it actually is a perfect piece to use, not just because of the shape, and personally, I think the color combination and image of this one fits pretty darn well, but if you look through Bricklink, you can see all kinds of different sigils that could match up with different chapters or your own chapter uh, that you'd like to make up yourself. I think the detailing for the smoke launchers at the top look absolutely awesome, and at the end of the day, we're really excited to bring this model over to you guys. Now, you have seen me handle this thing quite a bit throughout the video, but in general, when picking this thing up, it's a relatively casual thing to move around. There is nothing on this model that stands out to me as particularly weak, I would say. One thing to take note of is that in general, it is a bit top heavy. You can kind of just tell based on the way this thing is built and the way in which the torso moves around, there isn't actually that much friction. So the torso can actually spin quite easily and you can see a lot of wobbling around when you are posing this. So that's not really a comment about delicacy because I don't really think this thing is very delicate. Of course, it does have a lots of greebling on there. So you aren't going to be wanting to play around with this model in any rough fashion, especially after building it when you see how complex it is on the inside. But when you are moving it around, you will feel how incredibly easy it is to move the torso from left to right with that added weight and very low friction around the, the hips or the waist. Other than that, this is an incredibly casual model to move around. And I'm extremely happy with the way this thing finally turned out. And remember guys, if you want to build this model for yourself, uh, you can always get the instructions at our web store. That is www.brickvault.toys. If you have any ideas about another upcoming build that you might want to see us build, let us know in the comments section below. And as always, if you enjoy our content, you can like and subscribe. Thanks a lot for watching everyone. And we'll see you next time at Brick Vault.